Which one is faster, Python or .NET Core? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Rafael and this is Coder Cave. In this battle of the AWS Lambda performance war, I will pit Python 3.8 against .NET Core 3.1. I have some code that creates a simple endpoint that receives GET and POST requests and I will bash this endpoint with a JMeter test to see which language fares best in terms of cold starts and normal runs. Let's dive into the code. This is the Python implementation of the Lambda. We have the main entry point which is discriminating by the HTTP method that is used. In case of a POST we want to extract the document that is part of the body of the request, hash it, <clears throat> and uh, once we hash it, we want to insert the whole object into DynamoDB. So the whole object will have an uh, ID, a document, and a hash. And um, I want to insert doing a conditional put, and uh, I want to have it conditional by ID. So in case there is an, uh, the same ID is already in the DynamoDB table, the operation will fail. And if it fails, I will return in uh, HTTP 409, which is a conflict. Otherwise, I return a 201, which is a create, and uh, I return the ID, which is set by the client, and the hash of the document. In case of a GET request, I get the ID uh, as a query string parameter, issue a get on the DynamoDB table by ID, of course, and then return the item to the, uh, to the client. The .NET implementation is very similar. Of course, this is C-sharp, so it's a lot more verbose than Python. Um, the code is uh, just going to do the same put uh, and um, get from uh, DynamoDB. Now it's important to point out how the references to the DynamoDB client and the DynamoDB table are created in this code. Uh, I'm using a static constructor so that I'm sure that this operation is done only the first time any of those properties are requested, properties or variables, static variables are requested, um, so that I'm initializing the client and I'm referencing the table only once. And once those references are created, they are uh, kept in memory so that uh, subsequent executions of the Lambda keep referencing values that are already uh, existing, which is similar to what happens in uh, Python when uh, we create global variables in, uh, in the Lambda. Uh, now let's have a look at the template for, uh, for this Lambda. The templates for Python and .NET Core are very similar. I'm setting a, a timeout to 10 seconds, that's not uh, too important. Uh, for the function, uh, um, the .NET implementation runs on a .NET, .NET Core 3.1. This ensures that the Lambda runs on a Amazon Linux 2 virtual machine. I'm allocating a 256 megabyte of memory and reserving 10 concurrent executions. This is going to be important for the test. Um, to keep things consistent. For the rest, um, just giving permission to put and read, uh, and of course, query into the DynamoDB table. And uh, through API Gateway, I'm defining the uh, post and get endpoints on the hash uh, endpoint. And over here, I'm declaring the DynamoDB table. Uh, it's very simple. It has ID and uh, hash as uh, uh, keys. I'm not really using hash, but uh, I'm keeping it there. Uh, the Python template is basically the same thing. The table is a copy-paste. Everything else is basically a copy-paste, except, of course, the runtime. That's a Python 3.8. This also runs on Amazon Linux 2 machine. Um, same memory, same amount of reserved concurrency executions. And with this done, we can start deploying. Can deploy uh, both uh, .NET and uh, Python. I 
All right, with the deployment successful, we can go back into AWS console and find the URI of our uh, APIs. So I will start with .NET. I will uh, find the URL in staging. I will use the production uh, as usual. And uh, I will quickly show you how the API is supposed to work using Postman. So I have prepared a request here. Uh, this is the payload, it's an ID uh, and document. For the ID, I'm going to use a uh, online tool to generate UUIDs. I'm going back to Postman, I will send this. And when I'm posting, I'm receiving back um, HTTP 201, uh, the ID and the hash of the um, the document and uh, if I'm using get and I'm passing the ID as a query string parameter I will receive the document back so what we want to do now is to simulate this thing with JMeter so that it's happening a lot of times so doing a real load test all right, so here we are in uh, JMeter. So in JMeter, I'm going to create a thread group, a thread group with 10 concurrent users, a ramp up time of uh, zero. And this is going to be .NET Core. And uh, in this thread group, I will add two samplers that are HTTP requests. A sampler is a component that lets me model a request. So this is going to be a .NET Core post. Uh, it's an HTTPS endpoint. Uh, and, uh, and our endpoint is this thing found in AWS console. The method is post and the path is hash. The body is going to be similar, but not exactly the same to what I used in uh, Postman. So we can uh, we can grab. Oh, sorry, wrong request. I can grab this, transfer it over to uh, JMeter. But now there is a problem. I don't want to have a hard-coded UUID because otherwise I will always have only one document saved. Uh, maybe I will have one successful uh, create operation and all the subsequent one will be a 409. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create uh, as a preprocessor, I will create a user parameter. A user parameter with a variable, the variable name will be identifier. And the identifier will be generated using a function of JMeter called UUID. So because it's a function, I open and close uh, and then close the curly braces. Now, this is going to create a variable that I can use in my test. And I want to update it once per iteration. Now, I want to reuse this in both the .NET and the Python tests. There won't be conflict because those are two separate stacks, which means they have their own tables. So the conditional insertion is not going to affect the, um, the fact that uh, there are documents with the same ID across stacks. All right, so now that I have my identifier, I need to substitute that in my uh, test body. So I'm doing that by referencing the identifier. Uh, to reference uh, the variable, I will use a dollar sign, curly braces, and the name of the variable. And um, yeah, this should be good enough. Now, the second request is going to be the get request. So again, I will add an HTTP request sampler. I will rename it as uh, .NET uh, Core Get. So it uses an HTTPS protocol. Here I could have used generic uh, parameters for uh, the requests, uh, but I'm not going to do that now. Okay, so here um, I need to add a parameter. The parameter is, this is the query string. So it's going to be ID and the value is going to be again our identifier. So for those tests, one request is putting a document 
and the next request, request gets it. All right. I think there is nothing else needed here. We need to do basically the same thing for Python. I don't want to do it all over again manually, so I will just copy paste the .NET Core group. I will rename things here and there. Now, to see the results, I will add a listener to the test plan, a listener called uh, summary report. Now, the summary report is going to show me in a tabular form the result of my test. All right, and with that, we should be good to test. Let's cross our fingers. All right, so this first run uh, with uh, 10 concurrent uh, users, one round uh, shows that uh, clearly there are cold starts and the .NET has a far worse cold start than uh, Python. We are at, uh, at very, very long cold starts. And this reflects really badly on uh, the average execution time. Here we can see clearly uh, Python destroys .NET when uh, when it's time to measure cold starts so now let's change our test plan so instead of uh, looping one time which means not looping let's loop uh, okay maybe not a thousand times let's loop 500 times each thread group so the incidence of cold starts is going to be very small so let's erase the summary and run the whole test all over again. All right, so for the first run of, uh, of tests, we see that the .NET uh, suffered a few cold starts and yet the average execution is basically the same as with uh, Python, only the post endpoint is one millisecond slower. Let's run this whole test all over again. Um, now I'm pretty sure there won't be any cold starts in, uh, in this run. All right, the test is completed and uh, we can see that uh, Python is considerably slower. Even though .NET seemed to have some cold starts, the post endpoint uh, performs roughly 10% uh, better than uh, its uh, Python counterpart. And the same thing applies to the get endpoint. So it looks like when uh, the .NET executions are uh, warm, they perform a good 10% better than uh, in Python. The results are in. Python is much faster at cold starts, but .NET Core seems to be 10% faster consistently under normal conditions. And keep in mind that you can overcome the cold starts issue by just using provisioned concurrency. Check my video about that. You can find all the source code for this video at github.com slash codercave. Check the links in the description. Now, subscribe to this channel. Let me know in the comments down below what's your language of choice when you code AWS Lambdas. And follow me on Twitter at CoderCave.